Hey guys, Pastor Chad here, coming to you again uh, with our Port Naz devotional series. Just quickly, I want to share a few things with you. I, I know we ended a series last week, and before I jump into a new one, I wanted to share a few things. I was in a conversation with my boys even this last week about just what it meant to be a follower of Christ and what it meant to journey with Christ. And, and I was talking to another person, another young adult, about a, a similar thing. And this word came up multiple times, and it was about being authentic, about being real. If anything, I know that, that the enemy does not want us to be as authentic and real. That we kind of walk the walk and do a few things and, and play the show, but, but not expose the realness. But it's in that exposure of who we are and our struggles and our victories that people begin to see the very heart of God lived out through us. So today I want to talk to you about that. That you are not alone is kind of the theme. And we're going to walk that through. And that when we think through this idea of, of, of being alone or, or, or hiding our stuff or not wanting anybody to know, it's kind of this, this unspoken word that when you walk in the church, you, you put on the right clothes, you put on the right face, and you just say, I'm fine, I'm good, even when I'm, I'm not. I've tried my best to be real and authentic in my, in my relationships with people and in, in my ministry to remind people that it's, it's not always easy. It's not easy to be a follower of Christ. It's not easy to be a human. It's not easy to, to walk through a pandemic. Um, not, not, things aren't always okay. My marriage has fights. My kids and I, we have fights. We struggle at times. This is not easy. But it's, it's in that understanding that I'm also not alone. That I'm journeying with others who are walking with me. I, I meet weekly with a, a friend of mine who's an accountability partner to me, who, who, who speaks into my life, who challenges me, who makes sure it, when I ask about a, a prayer request, it follows up and says, how you doing about it? How'd you do? And it, as scary as that is, it is so needed, especially in these days of, in a sense, isolation, a pandemic, where we kind of feel alone. I'm praying that you would also find somebody in your life that could help walk that with you. Now, the church is designed for that. Uh, but obviously, I'm not going to share every life story with every individual. But at the same time, uh, I want to make sure I'm real authentic and, and that I don't have to always be on and perfect. And at times, I'm going to fail. And I want to talk to you about that actually today. When I was a kid, when I was really young, I remember going to church and I was, I was the youngest of three. My mom would drive us typically. My dad was in the worship ministry and so he'd already be there playing his guitar. We'd be there, but we'd usually be the ramage five minutes late. Maybe you can relate. And we'd get in the car and my mom was a slow driver, but, but not on those Sundays. When those Sundays, she was a, a Mario Andretti. She was, she was a Daytona 500 driver. We would get there so quick. And, and, the, and the, me and my sister and brother, we'd be in our fight or yelling or punching or doing something that kids just do. And my mom would be screaming at us and yelling at us. And then we would pull up and we would scurry as quick as we can at the, the door. And the door had to be right that we would go into, right in the front of the side of the church. So when you walked in, like all the heads turned and they could see you. It's probably not the greatest way of coming into church, but, but this church was designed that way for whatever reason. And I remember when that door opened, the Ramage children and then the Ramages overall knew that that meant game on. Faces turned, we were happy, Ramages were doing well, and we just put on that good face of everything is okay. I gotta tell you, in the church today, I hope that we can learn not to check our baggage at the door. You know, like, a restaurant or, or a place you'd go to, a really fancy one, that you'd come and you'd check your coat or you'd check your bag, and then you'd come back and get it when you leave. How often do we do that when we come with other believers, when we come to church, that we check our stuff? So if someone says, uh, how are you doing? Like we always say, fine. I've taught my kids and, and other people in my ministry that it is okay not to be okay, and it's okay to share that I'm not okay. I, I want to be authentic and real, and I need to be aware that I'm not always okay. And in my marriage, we're going to struggle at times. So as a parent, I'm going to mess up, and my kids are not going to like me at times. And when someone says, how's it going, I, at times I need to say, it's been a struggle. And they might say, man, I can relate. To be real and authentic is, is to be Christian. To fail and mess up, to try hard is to be a still authentic follower of Christ. I, I was reading the story today that reminded me that sermons I used to read uh, in Matthew 14. It's about Peter. You, you probably know the story, but Jesus ends up walking the water out to the boat where the disciples are in this boat. And they think it's a ghost, and they scream out, it's a ghost, they said. And then Jesus immediately replies to them, 
in 14, uh, 27, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. I love uh, Peter. He responds back to him. Peter's my favorite. He always responds back with this courageous, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to make it. God, I want to be with you. And, and he, re he quickly replies, none of them does, but Peter does. Then Peter got down and said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come on the water with you. And Jesus says, come. I love that word, come, he said. And then Peter got down off out of the boat and he begins to walk on water. Now, as far as I know, only Peter and Jesus really do this, right? And then he comes towards Jesus. Then it says, when he saw the wind and he began to get afraid, he began to sink and cry out, Lord, save me. And, and when I hear sermons about this story, what I always hear is that, 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 that he sank, that he, that he had little faith. As Jesus says, you have little faith. Why did you not believe? And he's trying to teach him. And so we hop on that and say, see what Peter didn't believe. And he had lack of faith. But Peter was the only one that got out of the boat. Peter's the only one that walked on the water. And I'm amazed that he walked in the water, not that he sank, that he tried, that he was authentic, that he was real, that he believed that he could do it. And then a human emotions got involved and, and struggles and the wind and the storms of life began to, to make him doubt. But my friends, I'm, I am Peter. Oftentimes I think I'm gonna do well, I think I'm gonna get it, and then something happens and a storm comes and my own life I begin to doubt. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful. God is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And I know people say that, yeah, I can, shout, I, I tell God my stuff and between me and God, we pray and I ask for forgiveness, I feel good, but I still struggle. I still, I can't deal with it. I, I feel like it just is right there still. But there's another passage I want to remind you today. It, it's James 5, 16. It says, Therefore, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that, so that you would be healed. It reminds us that although we do and God does forgive, we ask God for forgiveness, we also need to confess sins to another, an accountability, somebody in our lives so we're not walking in alone. I want to remind you today, I want to remind you that you are not alone. You were not created to walk this journey alone. It wasn't just supposed to be you and God. God has made you for a relationship. God has made you to be authentic and real and to invite others into your life. To not walk to that restaurant and check your bag in and then go in and sit down. We take our baggage with us and we help let others help carry that baggage with us. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what you're walking through, but I wanna remind you today that you're not alone. That it is okay to not be okay. That, that we need each other. That at times we need to confess our struggles to one another, to remind ourselves that I, I can't do it by myself. And especially during a pandemic, that we can't do this alone. I wanna end with what I did last week and, and share a, a, a song with you from Carrie Jo called I Am Not Alone. Now when she sings it, she's talking about God and her and this relationship of God never leaves her during the storms and never uh, forsakes her. But I also want you to see it as the church. That God has given the church as his example, his hands and his feet. And if so, maybe as Carrie is saying that, we can see that the church also wants to be there to remind you that you are not alone, that we're going to walk together through your struggles, through your victories, that we can celebrate and mourn. That is what it means to be the church, to be authentic and real, to share life together. And that, my friend, is what I want for you today. God bless you, and I hope you're doing well. But remind yourself that you are not alone.